Hello, I'm Tamsin and welcome back to English Sound Building, the advanced pronunciation podcast where you do the work to build muscle, muscle memory and master new sounds. As always, remember that successful communication is possible in any one of the thousands of global English accents and there is no ideal. We're here to have fun playing with sound. If you find it useful to read as you listen, you can find a script for this podcast on my Patreon page. That's www.patreon.com slash English Brick by Brick. The link's in the episode notes. Everything's free on there. Just scroll down on the main page and you'll find the scripts. I am a one person team writing, recording and editing these in my free time, though. So if you like what I do and you're able to support me, please do. Today follows on from last week, so if you didn't listen to that one, please do first. Last week we talked about the voiceless and voiced consonant pair sh and zh, and today we're looking at the voiceless and voiced consonant pair tsh and j. So as the symbols suggest, if you've been able to see those, these are a combination of the voiceless t and the sh sound to make the tsh sound, or the voiced d and j sounds to make the j sound. So making them is a matter of starting with the first sound and then moving straight into the second. So t, sh, t, sh and d, j, j. We've looked at these sounds individually before, so I won't go into any more detail here. Please go back to the t and d episode from season one or last week's on sh and j if you need to. So we're going to start by looking at some common words with each sound, starting with the ch sound. Listen and repeat. Achieve. Adventure. Century. Change. Cheese. Each. Future. Kitchen. Match. Natural, picture, question, situation, teacher, Tuesday, watch. Well done. We'll read them again in groups of four, moving a little faster. Achieve adventure century change. Cheese each future kitchen. Match natural picture question. Situation teacher Tuesday watch. Fantastic. And now let's do three sentences with those sounds. So as usual, I'll read the sentences once slowly so that you can grasp the words. Once at a more natural pace, I'll then pause for you to repeat before repeating the same sentence myself at that more natural pace and pausing for you to repeat again. Sentence one, it was a century of change and adventure. It was a century of change and adventure. It was a century of change and adventure. Sentence two, I'd love my future kitchen to match this picture. I'd love my future kitchen to match this picture. I'd love my future kitchen to match this picture. And sentence three. It was a natural question to ask the teacher in the situation. It was a natural question to ask the teacher in the situation. It was a natural question to ask the teacher in the situation. Well done. And it's also worth noting that just as we saw with st uh, last week, making a sh sound for some speakers in some positions. Uh, last week, the example I gave was students, which can become students. Some speakers will make a ch sound with a tr cluster. So trousers may become trousers or treasure may become treasure. 
And as I said last week, this isn't something that I would recommend that you go out of your way to copy, but it's really interesting to notice if you, like other speakers, do do it sometimes. Okay, let's move on to some words with j. And as usual with these voiced sounds, you may hear some devoicing when the sound is at the end of a word because I turn my vocal cords off before I stop making the sound with my mouth. Um, but just try to be careful that you're not devoicing it completely. Try to ensure that you are at least voicing the sound at the beginning of the sound. So if we look at the first word, which is advantage, you do hear that ch coming through at the end, but you also hear the voice at the beginning, advantage, advantage. Um, rather than hearing advantage, advantage, which would be the completely devoiced sound. Listen and repeat. Advantage. During. Enjoy. Gym. Imagine. Jacket. Job. Just. Language message, object, project, subject, teenager, vegetable, village. And again, we'll go through them in groups of four. Advantage during enjoy gym. Imagine jacket job just. Language message object project. Subject teenager vegetable village. Well done. And again, three sentences with these words. Sentence number one I just need a jacket for the job. I just need a jacket for the job. I just need a jacket for the job. Sentence two, the project's subject is messages in languages. The project's subject is messages in languages. The project's subject is messages in languages. And sentence three, the village's teenagers imagined enjoying the gym. The village's teenagers imagined enjoying the gym. The village's teenagers imagined enjoying the gym. Well done. And a final note with this j sound is that again, particularly in faster speech, for some speakers, dr clusters can become j. So for some speakers, for example, drug would come through as drug. And again, recognizing these changes that can happen in faster speech can make a really big difference to your listening skills. OK, we're going to finish by looking at some minimal pairs with the ch and j sounds. And there are quite a few minimal pairs with these sounds. And as usual, it's a great way to practice the distinction between the sounds. So listen and repeat and really focus on differentiating between the sounds. And as well as the voiceless voiced distinction, you'll also notice that the vowel sounds are slightly elongated before the voiced j, and that where the voiced j is at the end of the word, as we've said before, that it begins to be devoiced at which at the point at which your vocal cords will stop vibrating, but importantly is voiced at the beginning. These are small differences, but they are ones which make quite a difference to how English from England your pronunciation sounds. So the first minimal pairs have the ch and j sounds at the beginning of the word. There is some higher level vocabulary in here, so do look at the script um, and get your dictionary out if you need to. Cheap jeep. Choose Jews. Cheer, jeer. Chest, jest. Chin, gin. Chaw, jaw. Choke, joke. Well done. This time I will read the ch word 
Can you give the j word? Cheap. Choose. Cheer. Chest. Chin. Chore. Choke. Excellent. And this time I will read the j word. Can you read the ch word? Jeep. Jews. Jeer. Jest. Gin. Jaw. Joke. Fantastic. The next set of minimal pairs have ch and j at the end of the word. Listen to both forms and repeat. Batch. Badge. Botch. Bodge. Perch. Purge. Rich. Ridge. Search, surge. Lunch, lunge. Larch, large. Well done again and again. This time I will read the ch word. Can you give the j word? Batch. Botch. Perch, rich, search, lunch, larch. Excellent. And again, I will now read the j word. Can you read the ch word? Badge. Bodge, purge, ridge, surge, lunge, large. Excellent. And to finish, we're going to try three sentences with those minimal pairs. The first two are reasonably straightforward. The, th the final one is a little trickier. Sentence number one. We just got a new batch of badges. We just got a new batch of badges. We just got a new batch of badges. Sentence two. It was no joke when he choked. It was no joke when he choked. It was no joke when he choked. And sentence three. They were perched on a large larch, cheering and jeering. They were perched on a large larch, cheering and jeering. They were perched on a large larch, cheering and jeering. Well done. And as always, it would be a great idea for you to go back to these words and make your own sentences, particularly ones which mix the voiceless and voiced sounds, which we haven't done a lot of today. Well done. That is the end of this week's workout. As usual, I can feel that I've worked my mouth muscles a bit harder than usual, and I hope you can too. Don't forget to practice as often as you can to build muscle and muscle memory. If you find it easy, speed the podcast up to 1.25 or 1.5 speed. And if you need more time, hit that pause button, slow it down. If you're new here and you'd like to follow me on social media, come and find me on Instagram or Facebook at English Brick by Brick. The link's in the episode notes. I'm not super active on there at the moment, but there are loads of old posts you can look back over for some advanced English help. You'll also find me on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash English Brick by Brick. 
everything is free on there at the moment. But thanks so much for those of you who are supporting me. And as I said, for the last two weeks, I do have some summer availability on italki at the moment where I teach my online students. If you'd like to be one of them, check out that link in the episode notes as well. So I'll be back next week with our final look at these and last week's sounds, considering how they're used in connected speech. It's our first in-depth look at connected speech, and I'm excited about it. I hope to see you there. Thank you.